Hello friends, this is Rahul Magan here as the Chief Executive Officer of Treasury Consulting LLP and today we would be covering a very technical topic which is trigger swaps. But before covering this topic, I am extremely pleased to share that this is the 499 which means one less than the 500 videos of Treasury Consulting LLP. And with this, we would be the second YouTube channel in the history of YouTube who would have 500 technical videos only in one channel. We have Khan Academy which is pretty bigger than us and of course they hired a lot of trainers also and here I am the only shooter. They have more than 6600 videos and here we have here we have approximately 500 videos. So the video which is coming after next wherein we would be discussing about fundamental review of the trading book, the uh, uh, trading risk architecture, this video would be this video would be the 500th video of, of on our YouTube channel. So we would like to thank you very much for the respect and uh, the encouragement which we have received. Of course, the journey has not yet ended. It has just started. We are looking forward to have approximately 600 videos by September. And if everything will go well with the blessings of Lord, then we, we might touch approximately 700 videos also by maybe the January 2019 and so. Hopefully we would have 1000 videos in the next one or two years and we would have a thousand video YouTube channel and of course after that also the journey will continue. So here is the topic wherein we would be discussing about the trigger swaps. Now there are a lot of uh, miss, uh, you know, uh, there is a purpose of shooting that video because, uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of calls which we are getting about where people are asking about the difference between barrier swaps and a trigger swap. Unfortunately, uh, I don't want to put any words, but either they do not know or maybe the internet or maybe maybe both. They It's not very clear about what is trigger swaps and all. Trigger swap, the difference between the trigger swap and the, you know, the barrier swap is just like United States and Singapore. Both are global treasury centers, but both are independent entities. So Singapore is an independent entity and United States, US is an is a independent entity. So both are different. But if you start thinking that trigger swap and the barrier swaps are the same, then there is a point of contention. Now trigger swaps are generally used by the banks. They are not being used by the corporate and, and between a bank. So it is an interbank phenomena. This is uh, hardly in, in, in my knowledge, even after 10 years of a treasury career, this is hardly in, in my knowledge I have saw that anywhere the corporate and a bank is interacting a trigger swap. Actually, what is trigger swap is a uh, trigger swap is an interbank which is a one level higher version of the total return swap. So let me give you a small background. Generally, what happens is that banks takes a position. Of course, I'm not saying that the position which they are taking is always correct. It depends upon the maturity level, it depends upon the board level to take the risk, and there are a number of factors that matters. No, it is not the only thing, right? So it's not that if today even Goldman Sachs is taking a decision, then it will, it will go correct. All the Goldman Sachs is my favorite bank. Like take an example. There is being almost several years the Bitcoin being launched, but Goldman Sachs is launching a trading desk on the Bitcoin now. And now doesn't mean now. Now means it will take at least one month or so for them to be fully operationalized the, the Bitcoin desk. So they have missed the entire cycle. They have missed the cycle when it was just 20 cents. They have missed the cycle when it went to approximately $18,000. And now they have now they are entering into the cycle when it is approximately 6,600 to so somewhere, somewhere 7,000. So all the decisions being taken by the bank is always not correct. But unfortunately, the human mindset is that if Goldman Sachs or Credit Suisse or any other bank is taking a decision, then it has to be correct. This is the biggest mindset problem which, which at least I myself is facing. You know, we first need to see whether the decision by the bank is right and wrong. Coming back, in a total return swap, what banks are doing, banks are exchanging the flows. In sometimes include capital uh, appreciation and depreciation. Sometimes exclude capital appreciation and depreciation. Now, once they are exchanging the flows, the only concern for them is, is the default. That there is no default which should happen. So if, if, if I use an example of a total return swap between Goldman Sachs and Credit Suisse, although there are videos of total return swap on our channel, then Goldman Sachs will continue to pay one side, Credit Suisse will continue to pay a pay another side. The only issue for them is that boss, what would if it is if there is a default? 
either Goldman Sachs will default or the Credit Suisse or both will default to each other. Or maybe there is a sudden change in the market, sudden shock, not change, shock in the market. Because of this, there is a huge capital depreciation which has happened, which forces the other party to wind up the deal. Because they are not in a situation to go to go out with the deal. So take it that way. But the only thing which is missing in this is that there is no trigger, which means how much shock. There are six types of shocks which we already shared with you, which is parallel up, parallel down, short term up, short term down, steepener and flattener. We don't know what kind of, uh, we don't know what is the maximum level of shock at which the trade would wind up. For that, the financial markets have introduced a concept called trigger swaps. Now in this, of course, I fully appreciate that we have swaptions also on, on, uh, on trigger swap, which is called trig, which is called trig. Actually, we don't use the word trigger, we use the word trig, which is called trig, which is put trig and so on and so forth. This is how it, it, it generally moves. But we are not here discussing swaptions or trigger swaps. In this what would happen, Goldman Sachs, let's me take a simple example. Goldman Sachs is having a 500 billion dollar whereby they wanted to convert the fixed liability to a floating liability. This is the view of a Goldman Sachs. Reason? I don't know. Because Credit Suisse on the contrary, they have also 500 billion dollar, but they wanted to take alternatively, they wanted to convert the fixed liability to the floating liability. The point of contention is the 10 year USD benchmark. And the man who, for, because of which both are taking call is who needs no introduction, Donald Trump. He already said that he's going to hiking at least three times in 2008. And I might not be surprised that if he even go for the fourth also, I might not be surprised. Now the moral of the story, uh, now the situation is that Goldman says see that Trump will not hike for more than two times, four times he is joking. Credit Suisse see that boss, he is seriously going to hike to four times, he is not joking. So there are different views, it's just like market, like today Euro is trading at 1.19, you will find a buyer and you will find a seller. Now the buyer will think that boss it will move to 1.20, 1.21, maybe few big figures from here, two or three big figures from here. On the contrary, the you know on the contrary, uh, the seller believes that no boss it will come down from here. So there are two school of thoughts. So Goldman says believe that boss Trump will not hike. Credit Suisse believe that it will hike. Both wanted to swap with each other. Now this is nothing but a total return swap. Now in this, Goldman Sachs agreed to pay fix, Credit Suisse agreed to pay floating. Goldman says that today the 10 year USD IRS, which is United States dollar Indian rupee swap, which is I have taken from Bloomberg, it is trading at 3%, while Credit Suisse said that boss I will pay you LIBOR plus 1.25%, I will pay you, I will pay you uh, say one year LIBOR, let me write one year LIBOR. Now sitting today one year library is approximately 2%. So in short that would Goldman Sachs is paying 3% and he would be paying approximately 3.25% and LIBOR keeps changing. It keeps resetting. We are not here discussing that how Credit Suisse would hedge the LIBOR part that is different thing. Now they will set up a trigger. What is that trigger? 10 year USD benchmark. They said that boss, if 10 year USD benchmark will cross more than 3%, even if it will touch 3.5%, then both of us have to wind up the deal. The reason being it's a trigger swap. It is not a total, it's not a total return swap, it's a trigger swap. And this is a trigger. Now there is a contention. The contention is that you might have noticed that I have mentioned in bracket the periodic here and I have also mentioned this as a periodic here. There is a strategic reason behind the same, why did I mention that? Now the reason is, there are two kind of trigger swap, one is periodic swap and one is permanent trigger swap. Now what would happen, let us go step by step, assuming this is a deal of 10 years and the mutual, uh, the, the net settlement to be happen after every quarter. One year have four quarter, so four quarter into 10 which is total 40 quarter. So 
if everything go well and you know for 40 quarters we will continue to transact with each other of course that is fine there is no problem in a periodic swap if the trigger would touch i'm not saying cross if the trigger would touch so it will touch from 3.5 to 3.501 or 3.50001 even the one bips of one bips even if that would get touched in a periodic uh, in a periodic structure both goldman sachs and both credit suisse will not pay the equivalent to each other for that period so it's a 40 week transaction oh sorry 40 quarters transaction suppose in a relevant quarter suppose everything will go well well till seventh quarter on eighth quarter the rate would be 3.5001 Mathematically speaking, it's a penny, but trigger-wise speaking, the trigger has happened. Both Goldman Sachs and Credit Suisse will not exchange any settlement for that quarter. This is periodic. In, now, now for ninth quarter, they will wait for the another quarter to come and they will see that how the things would be shaping up. Suppose for the ninth quarter, again the rate, rate would be 4.09002%. Now this is mathematically speaking less than 3.5% and the trigger has not yet invoked. So they would settle to each other. Assuming on the ninth quarter the rate again went to 3.50001%. Again this is mathematically greater than 3.5% trigger has invoked. Again for ninth quarter there is no settlement would happen between them. How they would hedge that part that is their call. That is something which we are not discussing because actually trigger swap is having that hedging part also if i'm taking a position on the credit suisse and credit suisse is taking a position on me then this hedging part would also matter and that is something which we are not discussing as yet we are discussing only a concept of trigger swap now in case of permanent trigger swap any quarter say on a second quarter forget the eighth quarter on the second quarter dollar went hawkish Mr. Trump given a statement that boss I told you that I would hike by four times I am taking my statement back I would hike by six times so after every two months I am going to be hike the federal fund rate now market went hawkish the dollar got strength and this 10 year benchmark USD United States Treasury went to three sorry my mistake went to 4.5 percent which is much above the trigger in case of permanent trigger swap, please note my words, deal would wind up. There is no deal. Deal would wind up. That is the difference between permanent trigger swap and a periodic trigger swap. Now if you have that question, after watching the video, if you have that question that banks are going with the periodic or banks are going with the permanent, it's very difficult to, very difficult to tell. It depends upon the pool which they have depend upon the currency which they have and depend upon the kind of trigger swap which they have. On a broader level, trigger swap is of two types, which is periodic and permanent. On a category level, on a category level, we have two more, which is direct trigger swap and one is quanto trigger swap. Now, one is direct, direct trigger swap, currency on both the side has to be same. It could be dollar, dollar, GBP, Euro, Swiss franc or you choose any currency. Quanto means Goldman Sachs is talking about the dollar but Credit Suisse is talking about GBP which is cable. He is talking about dollar, he is talking euro. He is talking dollar, he is talking Japanese yen. So, some, which is Quanto. To wind up this video and to cut the long discussion short, Trigger Swap is a extremely, I am not saying simple, is one of the best inventions which we have in the world of foreign exchange. However, the trader need to understand very carefully that there is a hell lot of difference between basis swap, asset swap, trigger swap, which is sometimes known as substitution swap, sometimes known as lock-in swap also, and barrier swap. 99% of the people believe that the trigger swap is as same as the barrier swap, which is absolutely wrong, because barrier swap would have two more versions, up and out, and up and in, up and out, down and in, down and out. These four versions and into two, which is call and put. This eight variations you will not have here. 
Tegel swap is one of the very important thing. It is being used by all American banks, Singaporean bank to hedge their asset and liability part. I strongly feel that the usage of the trigger swap is wonderful and it will give you a lot of potential to hedge the part of the asset and liability where you are taking a contra call. Of course, to wind up the video, the call the banks is taking doesn't mean the call has to be correct. It's a matter of time because it's very simple. If today Euro is 1.19, you are selling, I am buying, at the end one would win. Who would win? Nobody knows. Market will tell. The moral of the story is who will predict well. This is how the trigger swap moves. In case you have any doubt, you are most welcome to visit our Skype, which is Rahul5327. My platform is www.fixedincome.global. The website is www.treasuryconsulting.in. Mobile is 9899242978. While email is rahul.magan at the rate treasuryconsulting.in. Treasury Consulting LLP is committed to create the world best training platform and I'm not joking in that regards. I know that we have Coursera, we have EDX, we have Udemy, we have Google trainings, we have we have platform where my people are selling thousands and thousands of, uh, of training program. But this is being not owned by them. This is being owned by the trainers who are acting on the professional grounds. We, our platform, www.fixedincome.global, which is already ruling the Google first page, is committed to create the world largest fixed income to, committed to create world largest training platform. It's pretty simple. Open your mobile phone, www.fixedincome.global. You come down here, you will get trainings. And you can very well, I know that you might not be able to see, but you see the forensics, functional, information technology, regulatory and technological training. Sitting today, which is 14th of May 2018, 135 trainings are live. And I will give you in writing, like we made 500 videos on YouTube and of course more videos on the way, we would be creating a platform which would be better than Coursera, EDX and Udemy and all. That's take my word. Of course, everything takes time. Our endeavor is that 365 days down the line, which is somewhere closer to September 2019, all the 350 trainings would be live. And all the trainings would be supported by the requisite softwares. In case you do have any questions, you are welcome to connect you to come here. There are a lot of forms you can fill and you can you can uh, have your apprehensions clear. With this, I thank you very much. Treasury Consulting is committed to serve you. This was 499 video of YouTube channel. We did this in roughly three years and eight uh, roughly three years and eight months. And hopefully there is a lot on the way. Thank you. Have a wonderful time ahead. Thank you.